pure self-expression because it's just bursting out of me because it just feels amazing. I am realizing this morning how much I love talking about the universe. <laughs> how much I absolutely adore expressing my experience of and just the truth of this self this self that is expressing this self that is myself that is our self that is the shared self the one the presence the well being of it all the majesty of it all how much i love talking about spirituality <laughs> about who and what we really are that we are spirit <laughs> Not just spirit incarnate. We are spirit. Through and through. Every aspect of ourselves. Every particle of this existence is divine. Including, especially, all of this. Every moment of it. And I love talking about it. I love expressing it through my voice, through the lens that is this self, this being, this individually focused consciousness. It lights me up. It rings my bells, as Abraham Hicks says. It's just something I have such passion and joy for. I go right there. I just want to talk about it. I want to express it to anyone who listen, to people who won't listen. It's why I started doing this. Because it needed to express. Because I wanted to express it. Because it feels so fucking good. <laughs> because talking about presence puts me in presence. Because it's like I am having a conversation with Source. I am here in presence, describing it, expressing it in real time as it is flowing through me, around me. And I can talk about it for hours. Hours and hours and hours, truly. There's no point at which I really want to stop. I just let it fade into stillness which is just a different form of conversation. Still having a conversation with presence, with myself. The silent sermon, the one that is direct experience that absolutely transcends all concept of human language. It is a direct transmission via the experience, the knowing, the gnosis, Over the past several months, I have met several individuals who were on a path and were seeking and asking questions. And I've had wonderful conversations with all of them, including my own mother and father. Though my mom asks a lot of questions and I love that. I love it when someone asks questions, when they're engaged, when they are listening and saying, okay, but, so how does this work? So what does this mean? So this is your experience and this is mine and how do the two fit together? I love that. I love that. That lights me up just as much. To have someone chasing that for themselves, engaging with me, engaging with self in presence, in this present moment, questioning, seeking, hungry for more. Driven by the divine discontent, perhaps, which truly is the desire for love, to know love fully, to know peace fully, to know pleasure fully, 
because we know discontent, again, that's the contrast that serves to sharpen our focus. It gives us the clarity, the clarity of knowing something isn't right here. Something about this direction that I'm facing with my awareness, about the way I am experiencing this. Oh, there's a hummingbird. Something about this, this way that I am feeling, I don't want it to continue. And I believe, I believe it's, it's pointing me somewhere else. So where is it pointing me? Towards the truth. It is the experience of the contrast that drives us, inspires us to seek the truth, the true thing. Now we've felt the not version. We felt the unwanted. We know it with clarity. The more we experience something unwanted, that contrast, the more we know with clarity, I don't want this. What is it that I do want? This doesn't feel good. I want to feel good. Where do I go? How do I find this for myself? Not just somebody make me feel good. Somebody give me something. There's a realization, a growing realization that nobody, nothing outside of the self makes us anything. It's not the source of feeling. It's not where feelings come from, bad or good. Nobody makes you feel any kind of way. We realize more and more it's about the focus of our perspective. It's about the direction of our own awareness, our own mind, what it is that we're focusing on. We make ourselves feel. When we get tired of feeling bad, we seek out the good feeling and we begin to understand Collectively, humanity is beginning to understand it's not out there. It's not in another pill or product or television program or person. It's not in anything outside the self. We're realizing this more and more. I'm encountering others, other self that is waking up to this and that is seeking for themselves and it's escalated tremendously over the past month. It had already started. The shift began many, many, many moons ago. I mean, do we want to trace it all the way back? I, it, it, things really kicked off in 2012 and then about two years ago and then Lionsgate last year. But it's picking up such speed now. And it's so incredible to witness, to hear the conversations that are happening around me, to hear people waking up to the reality of themselves, of what all of this is. Questioning, seeking, searching, not settling anymore, not settling for less, not settling for a one size fits all answer, wanting the answer that works for them because that's what exists for you. The answer that makes all of this make sense to you, not in a logical way, but in a way that you can feel, in a way that is visceral, in a way that lights you up, rings your bells, lights the light bulb, the Christmas tree, all of the things. When you feel that energy flowing through you. That's what all this is about too. I mean, the heart chakra is being opened and the flow of energy is being restored in people. It's driving us naturally to seek the balance of that energy. Now we can feel it again. It's not so deeply repressed that we're just ignoring it and we're wandering around sleepwalking aimlessly, blind, leading the blind. People are waking up it's happening spontaneously. More and more kundalini awakenings occurring spontaneously as it happened to me. Things that at one point in time were considered rare or unusual. Not anymore, not today, not in today's world. It's happening, it's becoming increasingly common, increasingly widespread.
to hear of these experiences and to witness it is incredible. And I just want to express appreciation. The universe has brought to my path so many beautiful people, for lack of a better term, people. Beautiful variations of the self, beautiful expressions of the self, unique and nuanced. And I'm so grateful for it. And their seeking has become more determined. I was going to say serious, and there is an element of seriousness, which I am endeavoring to alleviate in my own self. Something that I have been prone to, seriousness. But there's nothing serious going on here. Life is not serious. Spirituality is not serious. As Osho says, it is laughter. It's joy. It's a joke. <laughs> Life is a joke. God, Source Divine, is laughing. Always, always laughing. This is here for us to enjoy, for us to have fun with. We just missed the joke. We were lacking the context. When you're not in on the joke, it doesn't seem so funny. When you're in on it, when you're in cahoots with the universe, conspiring for your own joyful experience, you can't help but laugh. <laughs> it's, it's all amazing and miraculous and so easy and simple. It just is. It's just here to be. That's all we're here to do. And we make things so complicated. When it's all really taken care of, there really is nothing to do. <laughs> there really is nothing to do. It's all handled. It is all provided for, accounted for. There is nothing any one of us could think or do or ball ourse ourselves up in resistance against enough to stop the current of well-being that is flowing, to buck the stability of the universe, to be removed from blessing, to fall off our path, to be anything other than loved and appreciated by all that is. Life is literally making love to you. Literally. You know that phrase, undressing someone with your eyes? That's what life is doing. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Flow that energy towards the nearest piece of nature that you can find. The tree, the sky. The sky is great. Make eye contact with the sky. Gaze into it with adoration and wonder and awe and appreciation and affection for it. And you will feel those feelings being reflected back to you. That's the sky feeling that way about you. <laughs> that is the sky looking at you with love, love, affection appreciation for everything that you are appreciation for appreciating it but appreciation simply for your being in that moment even if you weren't making that direct eye contact with it it's still looking at you that way it is still holding you in its loving gaze all of creation is always yesterday there was a moment where I felt the trees smiling. There's a whole bunch of them around the place where I work, all different kinds, half of them not native, of course, but they were so happy. They're so happy. <laughs> I mean, 
I was just admiring them and felt them admiring me, appreciating me, every single one of them, feeling their personalities, their own connection to presence, their own awareness of well-being, of the goodness that they are, of the stability that they have, shining that, resonating that through for themselves and one another, just this row of happy being, flourishing, delighted to be what it is, to be sprouting and growing and extending, to be life living. They're so happy. And as I smiled at them and they smiled at me, like a room full of people smiling at you feels exactly the same, feels more profound, in fact. Because once you feel the trees smiling at you, you feel the shrubs smiling and the clouds and the grass, the pavement even, the ground, everything is alive. Everything is awake and everything is joyful. It's all happy. And it's all so happy to be here with you. It's so pleased with you. I could just feel this overwhelming love of my being just gazing into each other's eyes, knowing everything is right. This is right. This is perfect. This is love. This, this is what love is, what it feels like. This is what we are. We are love loving. We are light lighting. We are life living. And to experience something like that, how can one not desire to express it? It just demands it. It's bursting forth. It's so exciting. It's so delicious. It is so the thing that I want all of life to experience together. This connection, this flowing, this interchange of self and experience and expression that happens without words is pure emotion. And so it's really beyond description. Words fall short. but I will until my last breath attempt to express this, to describe this. I will use all the words. In most cases, less is more. It really is. In the silence between where the truth of that experience is found. where it speaks most clearly. It speaks for itself. This is my expression. There's a child squealing in joy. child is me. <laughs> God. What a wondrous thing we are. Truly a sight to behold. Truly a blessing. Truly adored and adoring. It is my desire 
my fondest wish to express this. And I will continue to do so because it is so selfishly satisfying. Have a beautiful day.